In this video, we want to connect Flowwise to Microsoft Excel using custom tools and Zapier webhooks. In the previous Flowwise video, we connected Flowwise to Google Sheets using make.com. However, with the introduction of Python in Excel, you might want to try this approach as well. Both implementations are quite similar. So I recommend watching both tutorials and selecting the tools and services that best matches your needs and tech stack. In this tutorial, we will ask ChatGPT to set an alarm and add a row to our Excel table. The data in the table can be processed further using Python, serving as a pre-process to another project part, such an algo trading bot. The logic behind the prompt and the further process is not subject of this video. Here, we want to show the possibility of connecting Flowwise to Excel and how to use Python directly in Excel cells. For this, we use Python Editor, which is like a slim version of Visual Studio Code within Excel. Let's begin by launching Excel and creating a blank workbook. We save this workbook in the cloud on our OneDrive. I save it in a folder called Zapier to have later one more step in the configuration of the Zapier component. We give our workbook a name like flowwise underscore webhook underscore alarm. Make sure to save it in the cloud. We start by defining our columns. In our case, we have three columns. The first one is ticker, next is company, and finally limit. Then we enter a test entry and adjust the column width. Having defined our columns and added a test row, select these cells and create a table. Make sure to tick my table has headers. When the table is created, we give it a name like tbl underscore alarm for easier access later in Zapier. We can add another entry to be sure we define the table correctly and it expands to include the row. Once set, rename sheet1 to alarm for further referencing in Zapier. With that, we are ready to connect Flowwise to Excel. If you are only interested in connecting Flowwise to Excel, feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps. However, I suggest sticking around as the integration of Python in Excel might inspire you to learn Python. To learn how to activate Python in Excel and use the Python editor in Excel, check other videos on this channel. If you have enabled Python in Excel, you can convert an Excel cell to a Python cell using equal PY followed by a tab key. Packages like Pandas come preloaded. You can quickly create a data frame from your Excel table by selecting it and toggle between Python objects and Excel values. To retrieve the last entry in the data frame, use iLock-1, which returns a series that can be converted back to Excel values. As long as the column structure remains unchanged, the output size will remain consistent. Highlight this output with a green background. You can reference values calculated by Python within Excel. For instance, reference the latest limit value and display it in cell F6. This cell position will not change and we can give it a yellow background. We can do some formatting as we are used in Excel, like centering and making bold and give a border. We can easily get the row and column size of the pandas data frame with shape. It returns a tuple. When we show the Excel values, we will get the row count and the column count. The cells will be fixed in size and we can give them an orange background. The next part is dynamic in size and can grow based on the data in the table. Here we want to count the alarm entries for each ticker. So we create a data frame based on our table and use the group by function of pandas and group by ticker and count the entries. This time we only highlight the headers and the rows will grow depending on the unique ticker values. To see our Python code in action, 
We add another row and see how Excel and Python work hand in hand and all of the values get updated. We add another row and see the limit count for test increases. Now we add a new row with a new ticker. As we have a new unique value for ticker, Pandas group by adds a new row showing the new ticker with count one. To work easier with Python in Excel, we can use Excel Labs add-in. Scroll down and select Python Editor. Python Editor is like a simplified version of Visual Studio Code within Excel, with syntax highlighting, IntelliSense, and other IDE features. The Python cells are listed, and you can easily locate them. Some of the Visual Studio Code shortcuts, like Ctrl D to select next occurrence of the selection, works here too, and you can have multi-selection and change all occurrences at once. In the Formulas menu, we have the Python section, and here you can show diagnostics, which acts like our console. Remember, execution order matters, and is from top to button and from left to right. If you move cells around and disrupt the order, you might encounter errors. For instance, if you move the cell defining DF, you will receive an error from alarm sheet cell F8 in diagnostics. However, restoring the original cell position will resolve this issue. The initialization section reveals a list of preloaded packages. Now we come to the part to connect Flowwise to Excel. We used make.com in the last tutorial to connect apps. Here we use Zapier. We can navigate to Zapier and log to use a 14 days trial. When logged in, you see the dashboard. Here you can create a new Zap. For the trigger, we use Webhook. We can use the Webhooks by Zapier. Webhooks by Zapier is a premium service. For event, we use catch hook, which waits in our case for a new post request to the Zapier URL. We continue to get our webhook URL and click copy. Now we can switch to Postman. Select post and paste the webhook URL. For body, we choose raw and JSON and enter our data structure with some sample data. And finally, send it to the webhook URL. Back in Zapier, we test trigger and see the request and continue with the selected record. For action, we choose Microsoft Excel. For event, we choose add row to table and continue. I already connected Zapier to my Office 365 account. So I click continue. For storage, I use OneDrive. For folder, I choose Zapier. For spreadsheet, I choose flowwise underscore webhook underscore alarm dot xlsx. For worksheet, I choose alarm. And finally, for table, I choose tbl underscore alarm. And now we come to the columns of the table. Here we assign the corresponding columns to the webhook parameters and the test entry. One by one, we choose the corresponding ticker and company and limit to the values and click continue. When everything is set up, we click test step and see the result. So this is functioning and we can publish and celebrate that we have automated one more thing. When we check the Excel table, Indeed, the record is added and the connection is working. Back in Zapier, we give it a name like Flowwise Webhook, Alarm, and Save. Now the connection is set up and we can proceed to Flowwise to create a custom tool to call the Webhook URL. We've covered this step in previous Flowwise videos, so I explain it here briefly. We go to Marketplace and select OpenAI Agent. Then we click on Use Template to be able to edit the template on the canvas. First, we remove the tools and add a custom tool by searching for custom and drag and drop it to the canvas and do some adjustments. 
When we are happy with the positioning of the components on the canvas, we can create a new custom tool. We give the tool a name like set underscore stock underscore alarm and a description like a function to set an alarm for a stock if it reaches a limit. Next, we add our properties. We add ticker as string with the description, the ticker symbol of the company and make it require. Next, we add company as string with the description, the name of the company and make it require too. And finally, we add limit as string with the description, the limit for which we set an alarm and make it require too. When all of the three properties are set, we scroll down to JavaScript function. To get a sample script, we navigate to Flowwise documentation and to use cases and webhooks and scroll down till we get to JavaScript function and copy the script. We paste it in Visual Studio code to have syntax highlighting. Next, we update the webhook URL to the webhook URL we got from Zapier and adjust the body to our data structure. We copy the script and paste it into the JavaScript function box. Notice that we use the name of the properties proceeding with the dollar sign in the JavaScript function. We add the tool and come back to the canvas. Here we add our OpenAI key to chat OpenAI and lower the temperature to be more deterministic. Next, we connect the dots, but before saving, we choose a model which is optimized for function calling. Now we can save the flow and give it a name like flowwise-webhook-zapier and save. Now we are ready to test our work. We open the chat box and first we give a prompt which does not use any function calling like what is the ticker symbol of Netflix? We get the answer NFLX. Next, we give a prompt that will use our custom tool, like set an alarm when Netflix stock reaches 400. ChatGPT uses the custom tool and send the information to Zapier webhook. And Zapier connects to Excel and adds the row to our table. After the data is added to the Excel table, the Python script kicks in and updates other cells. So we have the latest entry in the green box, the latest limit in the yellow box, the new table size in the orange box, and finally our count per ticker updates and we have now a new row with NFLX as ticker and one as count. Now we test it with a new prompt. Set an alarm when Microsoft reaches 350. The same process happens again and we have a new row in our table. As we had Microsoft before, the count increases and we have now two alarms for Microsoft and so on. Now you are able to connect Flowwise to Excel using Zapier and do some post-processing using Python. This gives you many new possibilities when you develop your own AI apps. Good luck.